stuff everywhere. I adore the look of celluloid, but I certainly cannot afford to shoot on it. I can afford film convert though. Is it the same as shooting on film? No, it isn't. But does it accurately replicate the look of shooting on film? No, I don't really think so. But is it a damn great plugin that can help you get closer, faster to a look reminiscent of celluloid in terms of color, contrast, and grain response? I'd say yes. Film Convert Nitrate and previously the original Film Convert have often been part of my color grading pipeline on narrative projects. I'm making this video to demonstrate how I've made use of it to help you decide if you haven't tried it already, if you think it's a tool worth employing on your own productions. If you're a dedicated colorist, you're probably going to steer clear of it in favor of doing everything manually. But if you're like me and you shoot and you edit and grade and you fill a lot of different roles, then you may find Film Convert a real time saver whilst also helping you get great results. I want you to cast your mind back 20 years. It was 2002. And three years prior, many of us over 12 year olds had been confused and disappointed by episode one, The Phantom Menace. And although there were a handful of digital shots in that movie, it was primarily a 35 millimeter film. Unlike Attack of the Clones, which would be an all digital affair shot on the brand spanking new Sony HDW F900 with a two third inch sensor shooting on tape. Tape, in hindsight, seeing that film at cinema in the age of analog projection helped a lot in taking the, the, the edge off the very sterile kind of plasticky look of that movie that I didn't fully realize it had until seeing it on Blu-ray for the first time. It's chalk and cheese compared to the grounded analog texture of that original trilogy. By chance, I came across this Czech trailer for episode two made from a scan of an original 35 millimeter film reel sent to a cinema. Now to me, this aesthetic, just from scanning the projection print, looks A, infinitely closer in look and feel to the original trilogy compared to the digital trailer, and also B, just so much better. There's more contrast, the color tones are beautiful in my opinion, even if there is a more monotone warm shift across the whole image. It's a bit darker and it just makes all the composites mesh so much more kind of seamlessly together. The CGI doesn't stick out so much and it's not just grain. I can barely make out the grain on these with all the, all the YouTube compression. This more analog look, even though I'm shooting digitally, is something I'm often chasing. I don't like to make films that look so clean that people subconsciously just don't believe what they're looking at, which is something I feel I get even when I'm watching really beautifully crafted images that are just too sterile and perfect. I want to get a look close to 35 millimeter with all the flexibility and benefits of shooting digitally. That's where Film Convert Nitrate comes in for me. According to their website, Film Convert Nitrate is a film emulsion and grain suite that gives you the beautiful classic look of film for your project in just a few clicks. Essentially, Film Convert matches the look of digital cameras to a variety of film stocks. So let me show you how it works if you're interested. Otherwise, skip to the next section. So what we do is we grab our Film Convert. So we just, we just write that in. It's great film convert. All right, and this is what film convert basically sort of looks like. Um, you'll get uh, basically your first thing that you have to do to ensure that it's all gonna work correctly um, is just come in here and choose the camera um, that you're working with. Um, I think some of these may come installed, but Basically, um, if your camera isn't listed, it's not gonna be compatible. If it is listed, chances are you need to go to the website and download the camera pack if you haven't already. Um, in this case, what we've got here is a red dragon and I've changed the color science to IPP2. So basically in here, we're telling it, this is the camera we're using. This is the color um, settings that we had on for in Canon. Could be C-Log2, you know, C-Log3 or whatever on a C70. Uh, in here in red, that could be dragon color, red gamma three and all manner of different options. Um, but in this, we're going with the IPP2 workflow. So we'll do that and click apply. And there you can see magically 
that is now looking infinitely better already. Um, so your first main thing here in Film Convert is you've got this exposure sliders actually with RAW, like red actually works very well in here. So you've got your exposure slider, uh, your color temperature, white balance, and your saturation. Um, here's where it gets really unique and cool is that you can come in here and you can choose uh, basically which film stock, Kodak or Fuji or whatever that you want to emulate. And there's 17 or 19 or something like that, um, including some um, black and white still like film. Um, there's some really interesting stuff. I'll just skip down the bottom. Polaroid. Um, and I, it's funny, I find myself often stipping, sticking um, just in those top few. Um, I think with um, with this film, we actually did the 5207, which is the one that I'll most often use. So there you, you choose your stock and then what you can do is come in here and choose the intensity of, I guess, the color transform. Uh, mimicking film. And then the, uh, the sitting on to print film emulsion, which I guess is sort of like how, tr like the strength of that, the contrast of the luminance transform. Um, I'm probably not explaining that super well, but you can basically dial that in. So usually if I'm working on narrative projects, I like that really rich sort of contrasty kind of look. Uh, and I just have those set at a hundred, but um, if I'm working on like sort of corporate stuff, often I'll sort of dial that down and then I'll create another node and I might dial in that contrast very gently, not as strong, um, sort of separately and, and much more delicately than, I'll just turn that off now, um, than this when I do use Film Convert in that way. Um, so there we go. Let's just say that we're really happy with that, um, but we want super 35 film grain. And so here you can choose the strength of the film grain. You can dial that right up, or hopefully you can see that on that screen. I'll just bring this up full screen if you can't. You can bring that all the way up to 200. Well, there we go. All right. So um, there we have grain strength at zero. And let's just put that grain strength all the way up at super 35. There you go, you can see that grain. Now in this, I'm just gonna put that at its default at 100. Um, and I'm a big fan of grain. I find it just helps kind of the scene sort of all really, I don't know, I like it. it feels less sterile. Um, not over, over the top, you could go weaker than that and it'd still be there and have a presence and look good. But let's go with 100. You can change, you can manually dial in the grain size, the saturation of the grain. I never, I never touch grain saturation to be honest. Um, and image softness, but you've got these presets, like if you want to mimic Super 16, and you can see that'll start introducing softness to that image. If you go all the way to eight millimeter, that's a lot of softness that that's uh, introducing to the image. So we're just gonna go Super 35 defaults. I, I find that um, quite nice. Um, I don't usually touch these in here. Um, okay. And you can even export a lot from in here. Um, to use to create a look. So then you've got these, um, your standard sort of overlay um, patterns. Where are we? Da, 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 da. Where are you? Overlay, okay. There we go. So in here, this is what's really cool with the, so you've got your grain curve, your film response, that's basically like your, your sort of S curve. Um, which you can also do on another node. But uh, yeah, I actually don't tend to use this in Film Convert, mainly because notice if you look at the scopes here, if you look at the scopes, I'm ducking out of the camera, but if you look at the scopes here, I find it really hard to get them to go like behave below zero sort of properly, if that makes sense. If I'm trying to just bring it down, it's sort of still like, I don't know, it doesn't behave the same as it does in a Resolve one, where if I, um, create a serial node and I just want to grab this and bring the bottom down. It goes like that. You can see the way that behaves. Yeah, I just much prefer that in Resolve, whereas if I try to do it over here and I do that, it sort of starts bringing 
more of it down from up top. But maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe that's good for certain things, but I find it weird and it doesn't respond the way I'd want it to. So I never touch it. I always do my curves separately on another node. Um, okay, uh, there you go. You've got your, your color wheels um, in there. You can play with your, your shadows, your mid-tones. There we go, and your background. Again, I, I don't usually play with that in here. I'll I usually do those on another node in Resolve, but just real quick in here, let's just say that we wanted to just cool those mid-tones a little bit. Oh, and we're going with that sort of set cyan sort of look, and then we can just bring those mid-tones back down. That's sort of in the way of the image a little bit. Uh, maybe that's too much, but there we go. Let's just reset that. The other big one in here that is a really nice one to look at is this is your, sort of your shadows, your blacks, shadows, mid. Oh, it's written here. I didn't even realize. Black shadows, mids, highlights, whites. Um, and what this is, is your grain response. And this is something I didn't touch for years with Film Convert. Uh, and now I use it more and more often so that you can actually dial in the um, intensity um, of, that, um, of that grain response. Um, across the luminance spectrum of the image. So I'm just wondering, do this, does that change with different settings of film? No, or does it change with different film settings? Ah, there we go. So here you can see if I'm, if I'm jumping through uh, different film stocks, it's sort of emulating the way um, the grain response of those different film stocks. That's pretty cool. So we'll go 5207. So let's say we want um, 5207 has very clean whites and very clean blacks. And let's just say we want to make both of those uh, a bit more uh, grainy. And maybe we want to make the mids less grainy. Let's just bring those mids down. Uh, hang on, let me just go back. We'll look at that in full screen. There it is, very nice. Okay, we're just gonna bring this up. Oh my God, we've gone way too far. That looks terrible. Let's go way too far over here. Oh my gosh, that looks awful. It looks terrible. What's going on? Let's dial this back down now. Let's just kind of keep it all pretty level, hey? I'll just bring this up a little bit and bring that up a little bit. Um, and same over here. Now, this isn't typically something I do, but I'm just trying to demonstrate it. There we go, you can see. Let's just go back in that shot see there's some noise in those. I don't know if you guys can see that on YouTube, but there's some nice, I shouldn't say noise, grain in those areas. Certainly Gemma here, you can see that on her. Um, and it's, 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 you know, it's too much. I'm just gonna reset that now. That's much more pleasing. But yeah, I, I don't touch it a lot, but I know in this film uh, I did, but that's, that's the main stuff you're gonna work with. And if you use um, if you use a LUT, um, just a manufacturer LUT to calibrate, say, to Rec. 709, or you use a third-party LUT from, from someone else or a power grade or something to calibrate into Rec. 709 in a pleasing way, um, you're kind of using Film Convert instead of that. So, um, yeah, you're not going to use that and then use Film Convert generally when you apply Film Convert, if you've shot in log, you know, let it know you've shot in the log profile and put that in. Doesn't mean you can't use a creative LUT kind of on top of this. And so if I'm using um, Film Convert in like a, um, like a corporate um, video grade or something like that, again, generally I'll go through, a, I'll go for a gentler look and not that super kind of punchy um, sort of image. Let me just go to another shot um, let's go here. So, all right, there's a nice wide. Um, I'm just going to change this. So usually, if I'm uh, if I'm in here and it's shot in raw, I'll come in here and I'll put it to IPP2, and I'll make sure I'm happy with where the white balance um, is sitting. And this was actually set pretty dialed in pretty well when we when it was shot. I'm going to leave it there. It's a little bit warm, but I, I like that. Um, and I'm going to take that off Rec. 709. Okay. And we'll apply film convert to that. That was a red dragon, IPP2. 
All right, there we go. Now to me, it's like, oh, you know, that's just, it, I mean, it's kind of cool, right? But it's, it's really lost all the, the subtlety in that image. So first thing I'm gonna do is maybe try a different film stock that's a bit, um, bit gentler for lack of a better word um, and what I will do let's say I still want this uh, film color right up at 100 but I'll dial this down to bring a lot of that leave a lot of that um, you know that shadow detail and everything see how that's just like it's just pushing the contrast right out and we're just losing all of that um, like subtle gradation um, so I'm just gonna pop that. Yeah, we'll leave it, that, that'll do. That's kind of nice. Actually, I'm gonna turn it down even more. And then what I would do, um, uh, just, with a, just with a standard node, um, just come in and I might just dial this in. Um, now you can see. See, it's lost. So there's definitely some clipping, obviously, up there. So there's some detail lost. Um, any, yeah, okay, so that's totally clipping up there. That's okay. Um, and we'll just dial that in a little bit like that. And then what I might do, like sometimes you need to bump the saturation up a bit. Kind of nice. It's a bit warm. So I could go into the raw settings, but I'm just going to do it in here. Just turn that down a smidge. Um, and let's just say I wanted to add a creative look uh, to this shot on top of Film Convert. So that's, uh, that's Film Convert on, and then um, just very simple, very, very simple stuff. I tend to keep it simple. I'm not like a pro colorist or anything like that. Um, and I'm just gonna go into some LUTs. I'll link, I can't remember the name of this LUT set. I must have bought it like years ago, but I will type that name in on Google and I'll, I'll link it in the description below because um, I still use these on um, corporate stuff. Um, let's pick something. There we go, that's kind of cool. Um, and then usually like, LUTs are pretty much I think never designed to be used at like full strength unless it's like a technical transform, you know, from LUT, LUT to, from log to rec 709. Um, usually I'll just come in and dial something like this way back, usually somewhere between 0.2 to 0.4 or something. Let's go 0.3. Maybe I'll make it a bit stronger actually just for demonstration purposes. Um, you can see that's obviously affecting the contrast of the image. So if you do that, you can come back in here and sort of adjust these to kind of keep it how it was. But there you go. Um, yeah, let's just, for, for whatever sake, say that we're happy with that. And there's our, uh, there's our look. Nice, quick, sort of little graded image. I mean, it's nothing super fancy, but it's a quick way, and that's the thing about Film Convert, is that it's all about, you know, getting a, getting a pleasing image and being able to do it quickly. Now what I want to show you is how I graded my short film Evenfall in Premiere a couple of years ago. Yes, you heard right, Premiere. Basically, what I did before I started any color grading was go through the film uh, without film convert and color balance or color correct it. I graded it in Rec. 709 as I have monitors calibrated for that that are not high end enough to be to accurately calibrate for P3 or HDR. But my first step was just within the R3D controls, that's Red's raw controls, to balance all the shots as closely as I could through white balance, tint, and ISO adjustments. I don't think there's a single shot of the film where the white balance I use is exactly as we shot it. And if, if you have an uncontrolled set like us, and by that I mean changes in sun position, in cloud cover, etc., you're gonna have constantly shifting luminance levels and color temperature. So I had to account for all of that. So I'd balance all of that out as well as I could uh, just in the raw controls. 
And nowadays, prior to a film convert node in Resolve, I'd also have one or two nodes for white balancing and making luminance adjustments uh, before bringing that in. After color balancing, I then set all the files to IPP2 log. If you're not shooting raw, say in ProRes or a 10-bit Kodak or whatever those raw adjustments I'd make, you would make two, just not in the raw data. Either make them in nodes in Resolve or in Lumetri inside of Premiere. And then add Film Convert instead of a manual curve adjustment or color space transform LUT. I then choose my film stock, from even for I think it was Kodak 5213, with grain at 100% set to Super 35. I didn't really want to fiddle with it too much, or I did, although I did make the highlights um, grainier and maybe even the shadows too. Although Film Convert has a heap of control just within the plugin, I layered the rest of my adjustments in the Lumetri stack, curves, lift, gamma gain adjustments, a LUT at a very low intensity of around 10 to 15% across the film and secondaries. All of these adjustments you'd make on nodes if you're, if you're working in Resolve. So essentially, the steps are, number one, color balance and correct the shots, usually with the manufacturer Rec. 709 LUT, so you can view in the color space of your monitor, which for me is Rec. 709. Number two, remove the LUT and add Film Convert in its place. Choose your stock, the intensity of the transformation, applying the color and cine onto print film separately, for narrative, I always have the color at 100% and the cine on to print film usually at 100% too, as I usually like a rich contrasty image, and I can always adjust on a node before film convert if I want to dial the contrast back. When I've used film convert on corporate work, where I don't want that strong contrast, I'll dial this all the way back to 30 to 50%, and then manually use curves to dial in the shadow and highlight roll off more delicately. Number three, grade, lift, gamma, gain, LUTs if you need or want one or created one before the shoot. Curves and secondaries. Number four, in even fall, I was aiming for quite a dark grade. Like I wanted the opposite of that kind of lifted shadows look. So I always finish with a final Lumetri curve, ensuring each image brought the darkest parts of the image all the way down to touching like zero on my waveform, but without clipping. I just find a lot of films today look a bit too pristine to me. And that may very well be the conditioning like I've gone under, watching 35 millimeter you know, projections for decades, but it just stops me from believing what I'm looking at. That dancing grain and rich contrast for me, really for whatever reason, helps me believe what I'm looking at and buy into the world of the film I'm watching. When things are too clinical and sharp, although that can be a good creative choice for some stories, my brain just won't switch off. It's like there's something wrong and I don't believe what I'm seeing and it takes me out of it. Like honestly, watch Lord of the Rings and then watch The Hobbit in 4K and you'll get an idea of what I mean. I reached out to Film Convert with a few questions uh, you might find interesting and I'll read these questions and responses and then give you my thoughts on them before moving on to weaknesses or kind of when, why I don't use Film Convert. But I haven't heard back from them yet, so that'll be a bit of time travel. Hey guys, sorry, I lied. This video is getting a bit long. I don't think you need to hear me rambling even more. So what I'm gonna do is put my Q&A with Film Convert uh, in the comments below, or you can check it out on our blog. Oh, and thank you to Film Convert for getting back to me. All right, so let's talk weaknesses of Film Convert. As with so many things in filmmaking and, and video production, it's always about using the right tool for the job. And I find myself gravitating to Film Convert as an important step in grading my, in my grading pipeline for, for narrative projects and grounded, authentic mini docs. But when I'm after a clean, bright, polished, you know, high key for lack of a better word, look, I find con Film Convert is not a good fit. You can dial it down, but I've found myself leaning towards Cinematch by the makers of Film Convert or power grades designed to, to replicate that ARRI look when working with say black magic cameras, for example and then grading from there. In fact, that's been my go-to workflow on most corporate content for about the past year. Here I'm not looking for punchy contrast and deep shadows, it's a lighter, gentler look. However, when I don't grade with it, I'll often add an adjustment layer and a gentle layer of light grain across a whole project as a final step. 
that may be set somewhere between 20 to 50%. And to my subjective brain, it just makes the video feel a bit more organic, especially if you've had to apply denoising to any shots and you're veering dangerously close to plasticky looking skin. A little grain on top can help mask that a little bit. Ultimately, I think Film Convert Nitrate is excellent at what it does and well worth the asking price. Do you use Film Convert Nitrate in your projects? Which ones? What do you like about it? Or why don't you use it? I wanna know what you think, so please let me know in the comments below. Till next time, and if you enjoy this video, please consider clicking like, subscribing, and ticking the bell to be notified of all of our videos. We'll see you next week.